gon' chew me, cut the showtime. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rhymes, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. What's up, y'all, and welcome to the Blur Mob, your hub for all things black and nerdy. I'm your host, Foot, joined by my co-host, Ryan. Today, we are here to do a reaction and discussion on Amazon Prime's Box Machina Season 3 trailer, which is coming out October 3rd, 2024. And for all the Vox Machina fans watching us on YouTube, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn those bell notifications to, um, for future uploads, and leave a comment. Let us know what you want us to react to ne next and what you thought about this reaction video. All right. Vox Machina Season 3 is on the way. Oh, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. This has I'm been a long-running favorite of the Blurred Mob. This has been like... If we were doing mob awards back when this first dropped, this would have definitely been a sleeper hit. Yeah. This would have definitely been a sleeper. Honestly, I would still say it's a sleeper hit. There's a lot of, there's not a lot of people that know about Vox Machina. Yeah, because it was around that era when Dra Dungeons and Dragons started getting really big. Like they started, they made the live action movie. This came out. I think I just started playing Dungeons and Dragons right before this series came out as well. Mm -hmm. And I was like, huh. Dungeons and Dragons has a lot of freedom when it comes to expression and entertainment and Baldur's, the rise of Baldur's Gate 3 kind of aided in that as well. Like, it's doing its big one. D&D is doing their big one. Yeah, this is, if you, you know, you don't play D&D, because I don't play D&D. I ain't too deep in the weeds right this, but this right here, this is as close as you're going to line me with D&D &D <laughs> as it is. This is close as she getting. This is as close as I'm going to get to D&D. <laughs> I need mad at that. Well, let's go ahead and pull it up. All right, y'all. Here we go. The future is frightening. It's a future which hasn't yet been written. Interesting. Machina, your world will be destroyed. What was that? This can't be happening. If we want to save it, we have to go to... Hell. Uh oh. Buckle the up. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh my God. We're gonna need all cards. Where are everybody else at? So they legitimately like inhale. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big problem. The animation still seem on point though. And everybody got their nice little power-ups too. Yep. It's electric gloves. She had her magic boost in the last season. Oh, not they kissing! They finally kissing. And their romance is blooming between his sister and old dude. And uh, what's his name? Not Victor. They got some plush chairs in this. Scared? We can face anything if we're together. Boy, you think you can catch us, Dingle? Why? They play. They play so much. Think you can catch us, Dingle Dick? It's already September. October 3rd is right around it the corner. It is right around the corner. This, oh looks like, this looks like a lot of fun. Question. Do you think this might be the last season of The Legend of Vox Machina? Based on how this just went. Did you not get like, this might be season series finale type vibes? Honestly, I don't know. I, Cause like they showed the dragon, but because they were in hell, I could see season four being the last one. Like, this could be the preempt, like, the mission before they actually finish them off. But I'm not sure. I could see it going either way, honestly. I could see that. I could see... Because season two was like, okay, we got to go fight this guy. And season three is like, okay, we're fighting this guy. And then they don't finish fighting that guy. And then season four was like, okay, now we now we finna finish fighting this guy. I could see it working because remember in season two, they all got their new weapons, new power ups. Buddy got new armor, new gloves, new bow. She and old girl involved her own priest magic. Mm -hmm. I could see them going to hell and it's like they're doing the setup. They still might be a little weak because for them to have their power ups, it seems like those being thrown around. Yeah. 
I, like hey, it was a, it was a lot of stuff they weren't expecting down there. Exactly. Like maybe they just gotta like find a rare jewel or a gem or something to come back and beat the dragons. Like I could see it being season four will be the last one. I can see that. Because if you remember at the end of season two, they got confronted by one of those dragons. Mm-hmm. And she wasn't necessarily good, but she was also like, Hey, my homeboy over here, he's getting a bit out of hand. I need you to go exactly. handle him. But the only way for you guys to handle him and not just get completely like thrown off the map is that y'all gotta go through hell. Like it's not the best path, but this might be the, the easiest path. And that's my thing. Like, are they fighting him in hell or are they getting like a new power? They're trying to weaken him. Are in they hell? looking? That's that's what I was gonna say. Is it are is going through hell? Is there he does he have some kind of like fail safe or something down there that if we get to it, we can shut him down? Or is this another thing that we're looking for and the only way we can get through it is going through hell? Right. Like, is he immortal, but you got to find his inner soul in hell and destroy that to actually beat him in the real world. Like, that's... I don't know. I could see this just being the the the, the, the last... The, the season before the final. I don't see this. I don't think this you will don't be the see last this being the end? Mm-mm. Because they're probably going to do, fair. what, 10 episodes? It's usually 10, right? It's usually 10, 10. I believe. And were they in that 22 minute range or an hour range? They were like 20, 22 minute episodes. I could see this being a season before last. I same. I'm excited though. I'm excited because I was nervous when I didn't hear anything about Vox Machina because they usually come out in like January. Like they come out exactly. at the end of the year. I was nervous. I was like, okay, no Vox Machina season three. And, and I think this series is well received i've never whenever i hear someone talk about it i don't hear them say anything bad but i haven't heard just a lot of people talking about it. like you and me are like the only ones i know that's really talking that's, about vox machina that's what i'm saying that's what i was saying before like even now even with us about to be three seasons in i could still consider this like a sleeper hit i'm not mad at that viewpoint because let me look let me look up the vox machina review reviews Cause it's like we could deep dive into the trailer, but it's also like it just looks like a fun time. It seems like my Vox Machina is doing what it does best, keeping it fun, keeping it interesting. Like, yeah, they got pretty good reviews. IMDb 8.4, Rotten Tomatoes 100 percent Was this season one or season two that that's getting these reviews? Yeah. Even on even on Rotten Tomatoes for season for season one, a hundred percent and the um popcorn meter, which I assume is the viewership, 95%. Yeah. Everybody who watches Vox Machina loves Vox Machina. We need more people to watch Vox Machina. We need more people. Yeah, like... I don't know. I don't know. It looks good, though. I would be interested to see what challenges they face or, like, what sacrifices they have to make. Because I think the big thing that threw me for a loop season two is when Vex you know, off, got, it was, like, done in, and I was like, what? hmm Like, they're showing all the fun stuff right now, but I, uh, the other thing that I like about Vox Machina is that they also have, like, some dark undertones. Like, people get owned in this series, and when the main characters, like, gotta face a hard challenge, or if they kick the bucket, they kick the bucket hard. Because, like, at the beginning, let me go back to it, let me share back my screen. It seemed like Maybe it was Keyleth that seemed to be going through some stuff. Where it was. Yeah, and then at another point, she was trying to um help out Vax because he seemed like he was going through something later on. Right. Yeah, here. like the death of her family or something. You still see her power up going on in her head. Because the- she, she still has to master all of those elements, right? Like season one, she had like the earth animal thing and she was pretty chill. But the second season, her whole thing was like, Learning how to control the fire nature right. of her destiny. Because she, she has like two Didn't other... Didn't she end up overcoming it, by the way? Like, do I yeah. remember that correctly? Yeah. She overcame it. But I think there's like, there's more things she has to learn because of some destiny that she has. I can't remember, but some destiny she has where she mm-hmm. has to be like, she has basically, if the avatar existed in Box Machina, Keyleth is like the avatar. Exactly. Uh, I wonder if this is like towards the end or more so in the beginning, though. Yeah, and then Vax, you know, he still got that Raven thing. I don't think he ever like fully. 
I don't remember him ever fully like coming to terms with it. Or maybe because he, he basically sold his wife it. to a god, right? Right. So is he still balancing that, or did he? I can't remember from season two, but did he give in to it and he's just not telling anybody? Like he got like this secret like mission, like immortal soldier thing going on in the background, and is that going to conflict with what what the current like his new destiny is that going to conflict with the fact that we need to stop this dragon and save everybody yeah because he still was like if i remember it was dreams or daydreams and he was trying to ignore even telling everybody what he was even seeing exactly is he gonna is that gonna catch up with him that's why i don't think this is going to be the final season like i feel like we're going to see some of that to come to fruition because ain't no way they're going to fight the dragon and end it all end all of their individual storylines in one because I don't fair. feel like we're close enough to all of the individual storylines in the first place. I wonder if we're going to lose some people. Like, if we're permanently, like, the season two thing with Vex, like, we had lost her, like, one episode, and then she came back in the next episode. I wonder if we're really going to take some heavy hits. Like, as we get towards the end, are we going to take some heavy hits? Funny enough, if someone was to die off of the original team, for story purposes, I think it would be best if it was Grog. Since they're building out the relationships and people like to see that. We got Vex yeah. and Percy. We got Keyleth and Percy, Vex. And that's his name. Scanlan and Pick, Pike. Like, because everybody's, like, kind of coupling off and Grog is, like, that comedic humor that everybody loves. Mm -hmm. If they were to off one of the team members, he'll be the best one to go. From and, like, at the end, like, at the end of the season, and then it's like, okay, we got to get our, you know, our shit together. Exactly, like we lost our best friend. We all got our own support, but we lost our heavy metal, the one we all loved, like Pikes. How Pike would have to deal with that type of turmoil because that was her best friend. Like that would you be a lot. You want to know? Let's rewind. Pike's whole thing of like, because what's what's her role? Like, what's 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 um? Wasn't she like a priest who basically kind of got disconnected yeah. from the divines and all that good stuff? How is her powers gonna work if they're if they're essentially in hell? Is she like? Is this her time to shine? Like, is they're gonna are they gonna give her more this season? When it comes to power fantasies, there's kind of two ways that could go. She's in hell, so her powers actually do the most damage, or because she's in hell and she's disconnected from the divines, her powers are weakened, if not non-existent. There's That's... two ways you could go with any power fantasy with that. Hmm. I wonder. Because they only showed that one scene where she had got, like, blown back in the trailer. Exactly. I, I wonder if it's the second scenario that, oh, I'm in hell, my power is not. I would hate that. Because, like, the second season, I just don't remember her doing a lot in the second. Like, was she, was she missing, like, the whole time in the second season? I don't remember much about her. My, uh, some of the most iconic scenes, I remember Keyleth with the fire, Vax with the I, raven. and I, on, I... Honestly, Grog fought against truly. his people and got them gloves, right? Yeah, I don't even remember her being there for real. Percy Maybe was overcoming that gun in season one. Yeah, we yeah. no Maybe. Pike had a Pike had a, a moment. Was it was that in season one or season two when she had her moment? Because she had to get connected to the divines and her powers helped to save them from a, in a certain mission. Was that season was one it, or two? Was that season one though? Because season one something happened and she had to go reconnect. When they fought them vampire people, yeah, they got disconnected. That was season one when she fought the vampire people. Okay, so we might have to come back and um, I, give her I, some more time to shine. I feel like I want the first scenario because I would want to see more out of Pike. However, the second scenario sounds more realistic. Just in the fact that in this trailer, it just looked like they get in they ass turn every which way but loose. It seems and they like got to defend her and stuff. They lost their healer. It seems like it's the second scenario. Yeah, because Scanlan still seems to be, I hate to say worthless. He's not worthless, but secondary comedic humor. Mm -hmm. Vax going through his stuff. Keyleth, I wonder how her powers are going to do in hell since it's hell. Are her fire powers in hell? Is it a good yeah. thing that she got them? Yeah. Hmm. Is it going to come in handy or is or whatever it is? Because she got her destiny thing on the side too. Like, is there going to be some kind of conflict of like, you know, you need you need to focus on this. You need to come in the terms of realizing your whole powers because your whole like clan is depending on you. But at exactly. the same time, you have this conflict because these are your friends. You know, you don't want to leave them behind. You want basically 
truly, you like one of the OP members on the team. Like, if you leave them high and dry, girl, I don't know. Look, or if you left them behind and came back after getting all your powers together, you would. You really might be, be too late, but you might be too late though, because think of exactly like, like that whole conflict she had about learning how to get the firepower. How do we know she might not go through this same type of conflict and these same type of roadblocks with trying to learn risk? Exactly. Uh. And what was Vex, Vex's personal storyline? What was she going through again? She, aside from supporting Vex, like is she was she still traumatized from that death? And now she's building that romance with Percy. I don't remember. I I know they had the conflict of like with their father. Because you remember they met their dad in mm -hmm. season two. I know she was having like that conflict, but I, I really don't know what her deal would be. This might maybe, be a maybe good time it might for her be. to have a I mean, it'd be, it would be a good time for her because I know she got that bow. You remember everyone got their power ups and she got exactly. that crazy ass bow. But I can also see um, her maybe like losing trust in Vax because, like we said, he hadn't really been telling anybody like what his whole deal is. Exactly. So she and it like, seems like he's relying on Keila for like that emotional release now. Mm hmm. So there might, there actually, with everything everybody has going on personally, there may be like some friction going on in the team, and it's like we can't really have that right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And some of the decisions they might make may like. I agree with you when you said that this is probably maybe the second to last season of the whole series that shit gonna get real bad. Like season exactly. one was like establishing the tone, establishing the conflict. Season two was like introducing some more characters, some more layers people really like venturing off and going on and doing their own thing relationships being put towards the air season three is what i feel like it's gonna be like vox machina infinity war like y'all finna cut up bad like by the exactly. end of this, by the end of this we're gonna be like y'all wtf that's what i can see like that's why i'm not against the idea of you saying that someone died the only thing is more than likely they'll come back because this is based on like um critical role's real D, &D storyline mm -hmm. Most most D and D campaigns, they don't like it when like a main character just off. Oh, They'll the dungeon master might find a way to bring him back. I was thinking that. So like we already got Vex back, so it's like we we may not see anybody get off, but I or could maybe, see that. I can see them being off, and even though we know that per D and D rules, they might come back, but they just don't come back in the season. Like we gotta mm -hmm. wait till season four to figure out. Okay, we know so and so is coming back, but how is so and so coming back? And I don't want to spoil myself, but I'm on Critical Role's website. Funny enough, when it comes to their arcs, and it's the campaign one of um, Vox Machina, they have five arcs and a post campaign. Hmm. So you think they're going to do all five? What arc are we on? It just as far as. Act 3 was called the Chroma Conclave. When did that happen in the animated series? Chroma Conclave. I remember that's the, that's the drag that's the dragons though. Ain't the Chroma Conclave the dragons? If I remember correctly, funny enough, that's Act Three of their campaign according to the wiki. So we might have five seasons because after that it's the Tarion Darrington. Act Four is Tar Tarion Darrington. Act Arc Five is Vecna, and then it's post campaign. So if they're doing a season for each arc, we might be two. <laughs> we might be two slash three seasons away. Yeah. So. The Chroma, they've already introduced them. If that's in the arc that we're in, then yeah, then we're we're three. We're in three out of five. We might be. It might be a five. I'm not mad at five seasons because well, as long as they make it make sense, I'm not mad at it. With you saying that, then I don't see this. And then I not even ending with season four. Then if they're gonna do all of them, I don't see it ending with season four. Same because it, it makes sense because if because that's all I'm saying like with everybody's storylines, I don't see or, us killing the dragon, Vax handling the stuff with that Raven guy, Keyleth getting all four of her power ups, and we just saw how how long it took her to get the second one in the last season. Grog is like what to his people now? Now that he has those gloves, he's like the strongest like warrior, the leader, or something. like the leader or something like that. Yeah, we might want to see more of that. Like now that it's a lot now. I. So I take it back. I take back my statement when I said this feel like the end. Maybe to me, it maybe it felt like we're getting to the end of that arc. Exactly. Like we're starting to wrap things up. This is not the end of Le the Legend of Vox Machina as a whole. 
but we're about to get towards the end of this arc. Exactly. If the Blur Mouth can find a dungeon master, we could do a a Blur Mouth um D and D campaign. That'd be cool. Y'all watch us play D and D. Share a screen, do like three to five hour long sessions, probably limited to three, and we just share the screen the entire time. And then they go animate it. Go. Leave a comment down below. <laughs> Y'all want to see the Blur Mouth play D and D? But um. That's all I got. I'm hella excited for the Legend of Vox Machina season three. Same. But with all that being said, we're gonna shut this down. Thank you, Ron, for joining me for another reaction video. Like we said, the Legend of Vox Machina season three drops October third, twenty twenty four, on Amazon Prime. So make sure you check it out. Um, also follow us on our social media platforms for future updates. We're on Instagram at the Blur Mob Pod. We're on Twitter at The Blurred Mob. And you can find us on Facebook and TikTok at The Blurred Mob Podcast. And make sure you check out those links in the description on ways that you can support the mob. We have two links. One to Entertainment Earth, where you can get you guys some statues, some Funko Pops, anything your heart desires. And we also have our Kofi link that you can also donate to. All of these donations come straight. Um, a portion of your donation from Entertainment Earth comes to us. The Kofi donation comes straight to us. And we mm -hmm. use that for equipment, software, and everything to bring you guys these lovely episodes. And with all that being said, um, leave a comment. Let us know how you felt about this reaction, the theories that we have, and what else you want us to react to. And now, this is the mob checking out. Peace. Teaser trailer came out a while back, and it was like Vi versus Jinx. I wonder if that's like early. I wonder if that's like early in the season, because the way that they... The way I first thought about it was like, what if that's the very last episode? Like the very last episode. Of